I'm not going to lie. I do not want to make this video. I have zero interest in filming anything talking about this game, which is why I'm doing it from my phone. I'm not going to boot up the camera and bring up the fancy overlays and talk about all the stats because none of it matters. Miami falls to Georgia Tech 23 to 20. Absolutely embarrassing. And that's an understatement. I don't want to start seeing the talks about, well, the refs this and the refs that. It should never even be in their hands. It should have never have even come down to us taking a knee or not taking a knee. And was it a fumble or was his elbow down? Yeah, I'm, I'm pissed over it. Yeah, I'm upset. But it shouldn't have come down to that anyways. We should have went into halftime up two or three scores. But no, no. And I swear during my stream, I said, somebody needs to check Tyler Van Dyke's vision at halftime. Or maybe they mixed up his contacts with the water boy or somebody else because his, something's just off. His vision is not there. We, we brought it. 40 blue chip recruits, seven of them being five stars because we wanted to make an impression on those guys. Yeah, we sure as heck did make an impression on those recruits, and it's that they will never play for Miami. The only time you'll ever see any of those recruits step foot in Hard Rock Stadium is when it will be them playing for another team that will be beating up on the Canes. And oh boy, the stream was just blowing up. You know, I went from my normal four to 500 viewers to over 1,200. And I don't say that to boast because this right here, the other 500, you know, that came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dur during my live stream when we were doing like a live reaction to the video. Yeah, you, you remember? They were all in there just doing this. <laughs> cool, Miami sucks again. <laughs> that was all of them. Literally all of them. I'm sick and tired of losing. And I'm one of the fans that tapered my expectations. I'm one of the fans. All right. Coop, my room's already a mess. I don't freaking care. After I post this video, I'm laying down and I'm going to bed. And what I'm going to do is every time I wake up, I'm going to grab my phone, look at it, check the score. And if it still says this right here, if it, if it still says 23 to 20, then I'm going to go back to sleep. And then what I'm going to do is when I wake up again, I'm going to grab my phone. I'm going to open up the ESPN app. I'm going to look at it. And if it still says this right here, 23 to 20, I'm going to set my phone down and I'm going to go back to sleep again. And I'm going to rinse and repeat until I hopefully wake up and that score is different and it says something else. Because otherwise, and, and, and until I do that consistently and it doesn't change, I'm just going to assume this is one big crazy fever dream. Coop, wake up! Wake up! There's no excuses for this. We, we spent the entire week talking about how, well, uh, you, you can't really compare. You know, we know that Georgia Tech lost to Bowling Green, but you can't underestimate them. And then we have a, a scenario here where, uh, bro, it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. You're telling me that this Miami team, the one that we argued has been so consistent, you're telling me that this, this Miami team that put up 48 48 on Texas A&M that almost beat Alabama today could only muster 20 points against the mighty Yellow Jackets? Are you freaking kidding me? I got verbally assaulted all week. I should have called the freaking police based on some of the things that Miami fans said to me. Cool. Unbelievable. 34 points for Miami? You're telling me that's all they score? Oh, boy. Uh, I, Coop was obviously way too generous because it was 14 less than that. You know what? Coop, not in a million years could the Yellow Jackets ever put up anything close to 20 on that Miami Hurricanes defense. Well, how come they put up 23? How? 
Literally, how? Coop, well, Miami's coming off the bye week. It must be the rust. Yeah, we should have been well rested and ready to play because we had two weeks to prepare for this team. Well, Coop, you know, Georgia Tech, they, uh, they demoted their DC and they had a new one, so he gave us a lot of different looks. If anything, that also should have been a disadvantage for Georgia Tech because they had to adapt to potentially a new scheme literally on game week against the number 17 ranked undefeated at the time, Miami Hurricanes. And instead, now, all this hype, all this momentum, fan base buying back in, you know, let's go Dawson, let's go Gidry, Mario Train, let's freaking go. Now, we're 0-1 in the ACC. You know what? It, I, I guess it's Florida State, Louisville, who beat Notre Dame today. FSU took care of Virginia Tech. North Carolina took care of Syracuse. I guess it's the big three and then everybody else. And when I say them and then everyone else, I mean they're over here, right? Uh, uh, they're over here. And then everybody else is over here. Way over here. It's not even close. And the crazy thing about this, my stream ended half an hour ago, and guys, the live chat is still going. Even after you end the stream, the live chat, you know, it's still still over on the side. It's, it's, it's still moving. We will, we will not live this down. We talked about, hey, last year Mario needed a signature win, and he couldn't get it. Instead, he got a signature loss against MTSU. This year he had to get that signature win to build some momentum and some confidence in this team and the fan base. And you know what he does? You know what this man does right here? He comes out and he gets us a win against Texas A&M. And we're so hyped and we're so freaking excited. And then he comes out three games later and we lose to the two and three Yellow Jackets who let Bowling Green. I had to look up what their team name even is. All I knew was Bowling Green. Apparently, they're the Falcons. I had no idea, and I taught college football for a living here on YouTube. I what? Rewatched the game and still didn't know their team name was the Falcons. They put up, guys, they put up 38 unanswered points on that Georgia Tech defense. You're telling me. I did coop the weather, the rain. The, it was sloppy. Georgia Tech was playing on that field, too. I don't want to hear none of it. We should have been able to ground and pound regardless. Georgia Tech ranks as the third worst run defense in the entire damn country. Miami, yeah, we rushed for 166. When you look on paper, that sure sounds okay, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's not. Holy smokes, man. Like, how... I'm, I'm looking at the stats here. Georgia Tech, 250 total yards. Miami, 454. Let me read these to you, and, and let me let, you tell me who you think won the game. Uh, Georgia Tech passing, 151. Miami, 288. I said I wasn't going to do stats, but here we are. Uh, Georgia Tech rushing, 99. Miami, 166. Stupid penalties. Miami had, you know, again, people are going to argue refs. Somebody paid off the refs. I can't, but like I said, it should have never been in this situation. If if the refs, every time they throw a flag, you come back, you score another touchdown, they're only going to be able to do it so many freaking times. If we took care of business, we would not be worried about anything, and it wouldn't matter. I don't know what happened um, with Tyler Van Dyke. I don't know. That Georgia Tech defense is not that good, bro. It's not. So what's the excuse? What's the excuse now this season? What, what, what are we going to fall back on and say, well, you know, uh, we looked past them. We were looking ahead to North Carolina, Coop. Don't worry. You know, one ACC loss, there's still a shot. We were just looking ahead. No biggie. I'm tired of saying that. They shouldn't be looking past anybody. According to a lot of Miami Hurricanes fans that gave me crap about my score prediction, they said, Coop, the players and the coaches all came up on the podium and said they're not overlooking anybody. Well, what happened? Did they lie? Or did we just, are we that bad of a football team? Um, here we go. Here come the Coop overreactions. Look, my prediction, 
My season prediction for this for this year was seven and five. So what Coop did was was tapered his expectations. I said I would rather be cautiously optimistic so then I can be pleasantly surprised. I would much rather prefer that. And so far, that was the case. I was pleasantly surprised. But I can tell you, out of those five losses I had, Georgia Tech was never even on the radar as a loss. Never ever. And again, I, I am actually kind of curious. I don't know why we, we didn't take a knee. I was so flu- flustered and just freaking out that I really am going to have to go back and rewatch the game, but I don't want to put myself through that pain and agony and misery again. So really, I don't. But I'm pretty sure we would have been able to do that. And then even with the fumble, with the amount of time that was left on the clock, we still, I thought, okay, okay. Oh boy, here we go. They're going to end up kicking some kind of crazy 50-yard field goal and send this thing to overtime, and we're going to say that we had to escape with the dub. But no, instead, Haynes King rolls out of the pocket and throws an absolute dime, which, by the way, Tyler Van Dyke, trademark Tyler Van Dyme, but instead you got Haynes King on the other side throwing a literal dime to win the football game. I'm sick and tired of stupid, unacceptable losses like this. It shouldn't be this way. We've suffered for too long. Even if we go out and Miami wins the rest of the games this season, I'm still not going to forget this loss. It's, there's still no reason for it. There's not. You can't. I'm done. I'm done. I, I have nothing else to say. I guess there'll be a walking and venting tomorrow, which is basically just an extension of what this is. I, I, I can't make any excuses. There's there's no reason to win that game. You can't argue refs. You can't argue weather. You, you, you cannot tell me there's a reason to lose this football game, even if all the odds are stacked against us. With all these different things, it doesn't matter. We should not lose that game to Georgia Tech. And now... We're going to see if it sends this team into a downward spiral. We got North Carolina next week. Then we got Clemson the week after that. (sighs) Call it an overreaction if you want, but I think this was a scenario. Do you want to know what I honestly think this was? Do you want to know what I honestly think it was? I think, here's what I think. I believe that Miami showed up and showed out against A&M because that game had a lot of hype going into it, right? A lot of hype. Miami Miami got punched in the mouth. We punched back and we were feeling good. We played a Miami of Ohio team that you guys swear is just so freaking good. They're good in the MAC. It's a MAC team. I don't want to hear any of that trash. We played a, a, a Bethune-Cookman team. Not good. We played a Temple team. E.J. Warner. I I don't care. Not good. Should not be in the same conversation with Miami. Period. Ever. No matter what. We had played one good football team. We showed up and showed out. But still think about the mistakes. Think about the points that we handed them. And we were just able to capitalize on some of their mistakes. We made the most of it. And we found a way to win the game by 15. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, as much as it pains me to say this, would be the second best team we've played so far this season, and Miami failed the test. That means maybe, maybe, I hope this isn't the case, but I'm going to put it out there, and maybe we'll talk about it more in the walking and venting. Was that Texas A&M win a fluke? And what I mean by that is, no, I mean, Miami won. Miami was the better team. But that AM team hung with Alabama today. That AM team has been looking pretty good, right? We talk about uh oh losses and overlooking teams and stuff. I don't get that vibe from this. Is this really what this team is going to look like the rest of the season? Or what? I don't know. You tell me. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs>